Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Our first guest is with us in the studio. Now, we understand that education is very important, but it beyond having a first degree or second degree, what is more important is continuing education. Now, today on the show, we're looking at the importance of continuous education. Joining us to have this conversation is the founder, CEO of Legally Engaged, Yimika Adeshola. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Welcome, you very Yimika. much for having me. Thank well you Well done. Having you do me. such a fantastic work with young lawyers. Thank you. So I, I'm very, I'm excited at the topic that we're having, you know, the mm. importance of continuous education. Mm. Now, it's important that we have this conversation because... We're realizing that education is moving just beyond, is moving beyond the four walls of the university, yes. you know, beyond the BSc. Mm. So I'm going to ask a question. I'm now a graduate. Mm. So what next? Well, I think for most people, they would say that the normal progression, and it is, is you're a graduate, you get a job, or at least you get on the NYSE scheme. And that's ordinarily how it should go. You should, I mean, that's one of the first things that you should be looking at. But to tie it into your question about continuing education, um, I think we need to go back a little further. I don't want to belabor the point because it's one that is discussed a lot, but to understand that the syllabus or the curriculum that is offered at Nigerian universities, a lot of the time doesn't mirror where the world is going. So if you want to remain relevant in the 21st century, yes, leave school and get a job, but you also need to know what's going on in my industry. What are the new trends? What are the new things that, I mean, you were in first year with ASU strikes and all of that, maybe like six, seven years ago, who knows? So I learned that in first year, what's happening now. It's important to keep yourself abreast with things like that and look for how you can get on courses or how you can, even if it's a simple YouTube video, just make sure that you're continually learning and remaining relevant as far as the issues in your industry go. Okay, so on continuous learning, people who have mentioned phone as being a problem people or hindrance, phone. Yes. So how do you think that can be you know, dealt with mm. when it comes to continuing education? I think continuing education, it's, it's a whole variety of things. So yes, there will be times where funds might come in if you're talking about things like getting a proper degree, a master's degree, funds might be an issue. But then there are different other ways that you can go about it. There are many websites that allow you to take courses for free. So an example is maybe Allison. I think even Udemy and Coursera, you can audit some of their courses. Maybe if you want a certificate, then you have to pay. But at least getting that information in the first place is free. Even Google, everyone says Google is your friend. It's free, it's quick, it's easy. Certain basic things, you might not be able to go in depth and get as much education as you would like to, but at least you have an understanding, a working knowledge of certain mm -hmm. things with a lot of free websites and free tools that are available, available out there. So I don't think that funds in the 21st century is a good excuse at all. That is, we live in an information age. There is so much information out there, and a lot of it is free. Mm. All right, Yemika, what you do with uh, your your brand, Legally yes. Engaged, you help young lawyers, you help firms locate young lawyers as mm. well, and you help with mentorship. Mm. And in the course of doing this, you've done a lot of mentorship, a lot of HR work, yeah. and you've gotten to speak with a lot of graduates. Mm. In the course of doing this, what is the most, or what are the most common problems mm. or deficiencies that you've noticed in our young graduates? Um, I think a whole range of soft skills. So Nigerian graduates are certainly very intelligent, very clever. They're able to understand the things that they are taught at school. But um, somewhere along the line, I'm not even sure that I can blame a university for this because some of these things should have been picked up much earlier. There are certain things, how to communicate with people. How do I speak to my colleagues in the office? How do I make sure that I'm not coming across as rude or I'm not turning away people that I should be in solidarity with. So there are little things a lot of the time that people don't understand, or even something as simple as having an entitlement mentality. We can't really blame a university and say that there should be a subject on not having an entitlement mentality. There are just little things that people need to pick up along the way. Hard work, diligence, even smart work, which is what people are beginning to talk about a lot, I think is some of the things that a lot of our graduates haven't really got a good grip on. Hmm. People, I'm starting to hear a lot of conversation about, you know, EQ, EQ being better than IQ. Yes. And are we starting to see our young people making moves to develop themselves in that area? I think it's certainly better than it used to be. I mean, because like you said, these conversations are beginning to come up. So people that are really intentional about what they want to create in their future are beginning to say, okay, what really is this EQ about? Okay, there's a course, I'll take it, I'll attend that seminar and even begin to understand what people are talking about. So certainly there has been improvement maybe over the last two years, 18 months, but there's certainly so much more room for improvement, a lot more. Okay, in your dealings with young graduates, yes. has um, career choice um, 
caused as a barrier or hindrance to their um, effectiveness in the work environment. Mm. Because there are people who actually say they studied something else yeah. and then they feel that they have better skills in something else. Mm. Have you ever encountered people like that? I think, it, I think often, I don't want to say a lot of the time, often enough, so maybe you find people who, because of parental pressure, they would have liked to study something else, but they've been made to study another thing. Um, I think that in situations like that, it's really tricky. I'd, you don't know everybody's individual situation, so you can't really recommend something that everyone can do. But I think that a lot of the time, people find themselves in situations that to them is less than ideal. But insofar as you're in that situation, it's either you find a way to get out or you make the best that you can mm. in that situation. So what, which of the two it would be would really depend on the person's circumstances. For instance, I can't tell somebody who has three children and a family to run that, oh, because you're just not enjoying it, just get up and leave. It might not necessarily work like that. They have obligations. Meanwhile, somebody else might say, okay, I think I can actually afford to follow what I think might be my passion and do something that I feel I'm more suited to. So it's an individual thing, and I think it depends on the set of, set of circumstances. All right, unfortunately, we're, um, I'm going to be bringing up this conversation because it is something that we've all experienced. For those of us who schooled in Nigeria, okay. Asu Strike is a thing. We are yes. hoping that it's something that would go away very soon, but for now it is a, a deadly evil, the pink elephant in the room that we <laughs> must have a conversation about. Yes. For young people who have to deal with Asu, mm. whilst they're staying at home waiting for the strike to be called off, what are the things they can do to improve themselves? I would say the biggest thing is to go on an internship. To get an in keep yourself working. So everybody might not be fortunate enough to maybe get into Shell or get into Chevron for an in but no matter what it is, it might even just be helping out in your mother's shop. But there are you have you already have a five year course, maybe I'm thinking law now, or a four year course that is taking you six years to go through because of the Astro Strike. But if you can use that time that you have wasted, as it were, to do something else, and at the end of the day, you've spent six years, but the only thing you have is not just BA psychology. You have BA psychology, you have this internship that I took here for three months, another internship that I had here for one month. And I think there's a lot of value in internships that I cannot, I cannot overstate. You say that you want to be a psychologist, for instance, because maybe you read a textbook and it seemed interesting to you. But do you actually know what a psychologist does? It's when you actually go on an internship. There have been many instances, for instance, in law, of people who said, I want to be a lawyer, or I was told that I should be a lawyer. And then I worked in a law firm, and I realized that maybe this is actually not for me. It saves you a lot of time. You are leaving university with a much clearer picture. You've seen what the industry has to offer, and you can make better decisions. So I think the biggest thing that I would advise is get an internship. Unfortunately, the way it, um, internships are structured in Nigeria, they would probably not pay you. If it's something that you can still afford to do, regardless of the fact that you're not paid, I would certainly advise everybody who's on strike as much as possible to find someone that you can attach yourself to, even better if it's in the industry that you're studying in. But even if it isn't, there are a lot of skills that are still transferable no matter where you're working. A research about two years ago showed that Nigeria, about 70% mm. uh, of Nigerian universities are operating from curriculums that are 15 to 18 years behind. Yes. Now, if you were to give advice concerning universities' curriculums for study of courses, mm. how would you want to change that? It would be, I mean, so I, I can't, I'm not a subject matter expert on every other area, but if I was to speak for law, for instance, it would need a total overhaul. I'm not even sure where we'd begin with. There are many, there are many areas that um, we're now practicing, and again, using law as an example, that are not even touched on at all in universities. So I think that um, we set up committees a lot in Nigeria, and I'm not sure how far they go, but I would have to say that, I mean, so people have to come together. So unfortunately, a committee of some sort would have to come together and say, okay, where is the world going in this area? In psychology, where is the world now? And where are we in our curriculum? And try and make matches and bring them up to speed. But I think that it's not something that can happen overnight because for many reasons, um, there are many things that are involved. So if, you're, if you're dealing with a federal university, the, a teacher or a lecturer can't just get up today and say, this is what I want to begin to teach. So there are many things that would have to happen, but I would say that it would, it would take a lot of time because there are so many things that need to be scrapped, not even amended, just, I think, totally overhauled. All right, Hineke, before we let you go, it's not possible that I don't ask this question. I know as a lawyer that there's, you, you're involved in continuous reading. Mm. A lawyer, reading is the hallmark of being a lawyer. You know, you have to read all the Definitely. time, update yourself with case law and all that. But as an HR personnel that you are, mm. 
What are the first things you look out for when you're looking for a young lawyer that you want to employ or you want to refer to a law firm for employment? What are the first things you look at and what are the tips that you give to aspiring law graduates as well? Okay, um, it's twofold. So there's the first time that I'll meet the person in court, which would usually be through their CV or an email that they've sent me. So in that kind of scenario, what I'm looking for is just the fact that the thing looks presentable in the first place. So if you're sending me a document that is all over the place, it's 14 fonts of, uh, at the top, it's 12 at the bottom, it, it doesn't, I don't want to look at it because it doesn't look appealing to the eyes. So that is the first time that I'm meeting an applicant when they send me an email or when they send me their CV. It's very important. Unfortunately, we might not really be able to go into that, but there are certain things that your CV needs to have, but even at the first glance, it needs to look like something that I want to read. But then meeting with people, I think that the most important thing for me is, is confidence. But I understand and I, I empathize that that can be a little difficult when you're fresh out of university. It's easy to just sit here after many years and say you will be confident. But there is a certain, there's a way that you can carry yourself that you know that, okay, I don't know anything. I'm green, I'm fresh out of university, but at least with what I have been given, if it's the education that I've studied, if it's the education that I've gone through, I've made the best out of it. And there's a way that that can come across when you're speaking with someone, those are the kind of things that I look out for. All right. Thank you so much for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. Thank and all the best with um, Legally you, Engaged. How can Thank people you. follow you, you know, for mentorship, for mm. questions and answers? You know, how can they follow you? Well, they can follow us on Instagram. We're on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook as Legally Engaged and on Twitter as Legally Underscore Engaged. All right, then. Yes. You can follow her and find out more information. You can ask for questions. You, know, you can ask for answers. You, you can follow her more for mentorship as well. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.